Hello and welcome back to part two of the walk cycle tutorial. Uh, part one was uh, basically focusing on uh, just constructing the right leg. So through 40 frames and a series of poses, uh, we created this first leg using um, with the assistance of the guides. Now we're going to continue on with the next leg and I'm going to just speed up the process here because uh, we're just going to follow the exact same formula as the, um, the right leg. So with that we're going to start a brand new layer, double click on that to rename it uh, left leg and in this case we're going to focus on this grey leg and what we'll do is we'll head back over to the rectangle tool and head over to our properties and for this particular leg we'll just change the color of uh, completely and we'll just focus in on it. and we'll just use a series of orange colors making sure that we're in object mode and once again we're just going to trace it out and position it in place using the free transform tool and try to get it roughly in position it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect then once you're ready, you can move on to the next color. And I'm just going to slightly overlap it so there's no gaps in between when the leg bends. And the idea is to try to get both legs in proportion. We don't want one leg being uh, taller or shorter than the other. So that's the lower left leg and the last color just being a yellow. Just draw the foot roughly about the same size as the other leg and we'll just position it in place like that. Now just like part one uh, we're going to convert these into symbols. So we'll start up the top We'll select the left upper leg and click F8 on the keyboard. And we'll call this left upper leg, making sure that the type is set to graphic. And we'll repeat the process with the lower two. So F8, left, lower leg. Click OK. F8, left, lower. Uh, sorry, we'll call this one foot, left foot. And click OK. Now, once again, if we head back over to the library palette, now we can see quite a few symbols racking up, and that's why it's really important to really to label these correctly, um, distinguishing the right from the leg, because later on we'll be refining these um, symbols individually just to make the uh, character look a little bit nicer. So we'll head over towards the bone tool and connect them, and we'll repeat the process of animating them. So I'm going to speed things up a bit and then we'll move on to the body. But before I do, I'm just going to do two quick things and I'm just going to uh, lock away the right leg layer so we don't make any um, changes we don't want to. I'll just click on that little icon and I'm just going to clean these layers up a little bit. So once again, we don't need the left leg layer because there's nothing in it. So I'll trash that and I'm going to rename this armature left underscore leg. Now we can continue on animating. So once again, I'll speed up the process a little bit and we'll continue uh, animating the left leg. Now, as like before, we're uh, um, now moving on to the last frame. And what we want to do is just simply copy and paste the first pose. So just control click on that individual frame, uh, copy pose, control click, and paste pose there. So then we get a continuous motion all the way through. And if we preview that, now we've got both legs animating. Now, the next stage is to move on to the body. And this part is actually much easier than animating the three limbs in each leg. Because in my previous examples, the body just consists of one simple shape. And so we'll devote a brand new layer to this and we'll call it body. 
and just to make sure I might lock away the left leg so we don't make any unnecessary changes and I'm just going to head over to the oval tool and just change some properties so I'll just change the color to just a maybe a just a green in color and now with this one I'm going to draw just a random oval shape and I'm going to use the cursor just to make some slight changes so it looks a little bit more in shape so I'm just hovering over the edges waiting for that cursor to change and just almost create this pear shape I'll just do it really quickly and that's good enough now with this particular body if I just hide everything you'll notice on the guides the body just basically moves up and down at certain points so that's all we're going to imitate and we can do that with a simple motion tween rather than converting it into various poses or anything like that so I'll just bring that back up and before we actually uh, apply motion tween we have to convert this body into a symbol so we just select that and click F8 and call this body making sure it's a graphic symbol and now we're ready to add the motion tween. So to add a motion tween, just right click on the keyframe, head up to the top, motion tween. Now we can see a shade of blue across our uh, timeline. And so for every five keyframes, we're simply just going to move it in position. And this is a pretty quick process. Might be a little bit hard to see the guides, but. Now I found that when you get to the last keyframe, I found it does get a little bit trickier here because when I copy and paste frames over, it just doesn't tend to work as well. So I just try to match this up by eye and hit control enter just to preview that. And that's looking pretty good instead of copying and pasting the pose. So I've just got to reorganize some of these layers because as you can see when I turn back on the left and right leg you can see both of them are tucked underneath the uh, body. So what I might do is just unlock a few of these and I'll move the right leg just above the body so then we can see the hit. And now if we hit control enter that's looking a little bit more convincing. We've still got a lot more refinement to, um, to do but the um, but the animation is looking quite um, smooth and fluid. So the next stage is to move on to the two arms. And once again, I'm going to speed up the process, but essentially we follow the exact same formula. And we're going to create two rectangular shapes and a circle for the arm, or the hand, should I say. We're going to repeat the process for the other arm. And the head is the same essentially as the body because that's uh, bobs up and down at, with the guides. So that's going to be the next stage and I'm just going to fasten things up a little bit. Now this is a document that I prepared earlier but essentially this is a completed walk cycle whereas I've dedicated 40 uh, individual frames to a continuous loop where all limbs are now animating. If I click control enter you can see now the character um, animating in its entirety. So the next stage is to refine the character and I found the best way to do this is just to focus on one symbol at a time. For instance, if I look at the right foot, if I zoom in and just move my way down and if I just select the foot, I find the best and most efficient and effective way to work is to right click on each and every um, symbol and quite simply click edit in place. And that gives you the rest of the body as a bit of a reference tool, whereas you can just make some subtle changes. For instance, we can now change the color of the foot, but also if we can adjust the shape, or you can delete it altogether and replace it with a completely different um, object or shape, or even an image perhaps off the internet. So once we've made our adjustments, we can click Control Enter and it automatically updates it to our movie clip. I've prepared a few other documents just to show what potentially you can do. And in this next document, I follow the exact same formula um, and I pr progressed onto the rest of the limbs as you can see. And I've just created a really basic character that is essentially black with some uh, gradations around the uh, body and the head just to create a bit of form. Um, from here, we can, because it, it is 
made out of a movie clip, we can add some uh, various effects to it to create a drop shadow effect, which is pretty cool. And then further down the timeline, we can start adding some background um, symbols that uh, that animate. As you can see in this final product, I've got the character animating in one continuous loop in a movie clip. I've added a static ground and also a static sky. But the buildings in the background are a movie clip in itself, which animate from one side of the screen to the other. And they've also got a few sounds added to it as well. Now I've provided a few extra links uh, with this particular movie because I've actually created separate tutorials to teach you how to create uh, drop shadows and also to create uh, grading effects and animated backgrounds. So I really encourage you to have a look and hopefully this has um, helped you to create um, an animated walk cycle. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.